Today is the tomorrow I was so worried about yesterday. <laughs> My question's regarding Hurley Burley. What was it like to revisit a character, Eddie, after a 10-year hiatus? Did you have new discoveries? Did you find that um, it was a different approach because you had already done this character before? Yeah, it was, a, it was the first time that I'd done a film of something that I had done a play right. of. And so because I think Marlon Brando once said, you know, the movies are, 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 are something just shy of a film's rehearsal. And you really feel that whenever you're doing a play. As you get three weeks into the rehearsal of the play, you think, what, you know, what have I been doing in these movies? Because this is really, you, you know, how much more would I have found out if I'd gone through this process um, prior to doing a movie? So in a sense, the, having done the play ended up being a, like a, an, ex, an, an intensive rehearsal period um, for the movie. And then the movie becomes its own process, as would a movie that had a two-week rehearsal period. And also, we came, we came, I came into it with a, a different director who shared, I think, the sensibilities of the production that we did Original, the David Rabe's I, intention of what that piece was, which was very different than the New York production. And so there was something exciting about exposing that. That was the most important area that uh, the director was helpful in terms of both uh, uh, preserving whatever discoveries had been ongoing as an actor in the, in the play, and at the same time finding the, that choice that you were going to have to settle on between more than yourself, but the other actors in concert with you for the scene as we were going to play it. Because we also sh shot on a very short schedule, so we were not, we didn't, sh we didn't have a big safety net on it. We had to go with a choice. You have said family is the most important thing in the world. Yeah. Why? Oh, many, many reasons. I have millions of reasons. Um, Two or three. Well, it's your foundation. It's your roots. It's um, the only unconditional love that you will, that you will ever get in your, yeah. in your life. You know, just broke, real low down, broke, you know. How did you support yourself? I sold ink pens over the telephone. Telemarketing? Yeah, telemarketing. Yeah. How'd you do? I think that was my first acting gig, actually. <laughs> when and how did the musician and telemarketer become the actor? I think I was walking down Melrose, and I was with uh, a friend of mine, um, Nicholas Cage. Nick said, I think you could be an actor, or you are an actor, or something, so I think you should meet up with my agent. And uh, she sent me to meet Annette Benson, who was a casting director. She was casting Nightmare on Elm Street. And then Annette asked me to read for Wes Craven, and I did, and, and then they asked me to do the film, you know. What was your role in Nightmare on Elm Street? I played Glenn. <laughs> and what happened to Glenn? I got sucked into a bed. <laughs> Not a bad gig, you know? No. Yeah. Telemarketing to getting sucked into a bed. I did the first few movies just as a way to sort of support my habit of being a musician. You know? Did Platoon encourage you, the fact that you were in that big, big movie? Well, Platoon was like, yeah. It was probably the first time I said, okay, I'm an actor now. But I, I generally don't want to know anything because I find that it's very easy to get sucked into the elements. Who's directing, who's in it, how much they're paying. If I don't respond to the story, if I don't think it's a story that I should do, no matter how good the part is, then I try to not go near it because I probably shouldn't do it. I read that one of the unfulfilled ambitions of your life is to do a song and dance show. <laughs> I, I heard you sing on Saturday Night Live. I understand you're something of a dancer. Uh, well, the truth is, we'd sort of like to be the judge of that. Would you care to, would, would you care to demonstrate? Meryl Streep did. And Meryl Streep did it. Did. Well, he says Meryl Streep did it. Oh, well, I, I haven't done this in a very long time, but I, 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 I took a tap when I was a kid.
night ended with a perfect pirouette. <laughs> After covering every role in the theater production of Hurley Burley, it must have come as no surprise when you were asked to reprise one of the roles in the film. I would like you to just say a word, please, about the difference between acting a role on the stage and playing a role in the movie. Is there any difference for you at all? None. None. There is no difference to me. It's, it's about finding what the writer wanted you to, to feel and experience and making sure that you get that across in whatever medium that is. Who wrote the Pulitzer Prize winning play from which it was adapted? Hi, uh, John Patrick Stanley. Um, we've arrived at a difficult moment, of course. For you, for me. Yeah. For the craft that we love, for the world in which we live. Fourteen years ago, I brought Philip Seymour Hoffman to this stage with the prediction that he would become the greatest actor of his generation. Gosh, I wish I, I wish you all could get a chance to work with him. He was beautiful. He's a beautiful spirit, and he, um, he had this unique ability to see people, to really see them, not look through them. He just really saw people. And he was, um, and he will be missed. Um, sorry, I really, um, I just really loved him. And I know so many people did. And I just don't know how much more I can talk about it right now. Sorry. Um, you said it, everything that needs to be said. We have him forever, thank heaven but not long enough so we we all go on in in doubt you were working with both phil hoffman and meryl streep mm -hmm. you've spoken of a sense of uncertainty a sense of doubt a sense of wanting to please those amazing actors They were amazing to work with. Um, again, I say the things that I value about actors. There's talent, there's skill, there's... But without work ethic, without that generosity of spirit to take people with you on your brilliant journey that you take. I'm sorry. That's all right. No. So sorry. That's okay. um, to create a world, um, which as an audience you get to experience that, but you experience that in the room acting with them as well, um, and they really—it's uh, transformative. For someone to have made that kind of impact on you, on me, on everyone is—it's uh, a testament to uh, his his greatness. My name is June, and I'm an actor. Okay. <laughs> Prove it. And, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, How many jobs you had in the last year? Well, I worked with you on Jungle Fever. I was an extra, though. I didn't get paid what you oh, got paid. I've seen people say that. Yeah. <laughs> I got paid $20 and a t-shirt. <laughs> I almost, I got a little, about, a little bit more than that. A little bit. <laughs> Tell our students with whom your mother studied. Lee Strasberg. <laughs> It's probably the best uh, advice she got on how to be a parent was from him because she always, when I was growing up, she, she every time I was emotional or I was upset about something or anything was going on, she, um, she had me look at her and she would say, what are you feeling? What are you thinking? What are you... <laughs> <laughs> the method was like the three-year-old, ah, oh, I'm feeling... Um. So I, I grew up kind of very, uh, very aware of my own emotions. Who were the kissy girls? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so I reach for the water. Um, oh God! I was um, I was very sexual in kindergarten. <laughs> Perhaps we are not meant to know some things, for that is life too, a seeking. It may be our only purpose here. All things are changing always. Yesterday is dust. Tomorrow a dream. Our gift is now. Thank you for a great gift tonight. Thank you. Very